Hello and welcome into this week's edition of the ARCA Racing Series Rewind Show right here on Racing News Now. As always, I'm your host, Garth Allen. Thank you once again for joining me today. If this is your first time catching a Racing News Now video, consider going down below and hitting that subscribe button and ringing the bell so you don't miss a thing going forward from r and On this channel, we discuss lots of motorsports, namely NASCAR, ARCA, IndyCar, and Formula One. And on today's edition of the ARCA Rewind Show, we're looking back at Saturday night's Sioux Chief Power Pex 250 from the Elko Speedway, Elko, Minnesota. And I apologize for this being a little bit later than uh, it probably should have been to uh, to rewind Elko from Saturday night. Uh, we're about, probably about 24, 36 hours later than this probably should have been, but I have a good reason for that. One... The points, the official points from ARCA were not updated until today. Um, and every time I try to do the math myself, I end up getting something wrong somewhere in the points. So I figured it's probably better just to wait for the official points because I figured I'd screw something up in there somewhere. And also, we have an exclusive winner's interview coming up later in the show as well that did not get filmed until today. So I figured since we've got both of those issues, we'll just wait and we'll get it all as one compact, nice show. Wrap it up with a bow on Monday evening. So I hope you are okay with that, and I hope you enjoy this show tonight. So let's get into the results now for the Sioux Chief Power Pex 250. Gus Dean is your winner from Elko, his second career ARCA Racing Series victory, first of 2018. Remember, he got his first victory back in 2016 at Talladega. Had a very interesting pit strategy at the end. Uh, he and Joe Graff Jr. both saved a set of tires early on in the race. Um, and he put those, those tires on late, and that's what propelled him to the front because he had new tires, whereas nobody else really did at the end of the race. He had a very up-and-down night, though. Got into the top five early, then had problems. Uh, actually, that caution where he saved that set of tires, stayed out, didn't take tires... Didn't keep the lead for long after that. Ended up two laps down. Spins out in turn three with about 100 laps to go. Somehow fights his way back onto the lead lap with a flurry of late cautions. Takes that extra set of tires that he had that nobody else had besides Joe Graff Jr. They both fight their way to the front and have a an epic battle for the win. Gus Dean is the one that comes out on top in this one. Christian Eckes comes home in the second position. He was up front most of the night. He was a top five car most of the night. Uh, just didn't really, I, I don't know, he was just kind of off on the night. I, I don't know that at any point in the night you would really consider him a real threat for the win. He was there, but not really the strongest car at any point in the night. Joe Graff Jr., the other guy on that differing strategy we talked about there in the third position, Riley Herbst, came home with another strong finish in fourth. Natalie Decker comes home with her second top five finish of the season there in fifth. Uh, they had a crew chief swap over at Venturini Motorsports this week. And Natalie Decker now has Frank Kimmel on the box for her. Frank had previously been with the 20 team, um, now moved over to Natalie in the 25 effort, and that seems to be paying dividends for her. Um, first week out of the gate with Frank as her crew chief, she gets a top five finish. So I am excited to see what that does for her for the rest of the season. Rest of your top 10, Chandler Smith here in sixth. Uh, he was really, I would, I would consider one of the two fastest cars on the night between him and Chase Purdy. Um, they got together, uh, I want to say it was about 50 or 60 laps to go in turns one and two. And that, uh, that spun Chandler Smith. Put him back at the back of the lead lap, fought his way back, and sixth was the best that he could muster after all of those issues. Travis Braden comes home with another solid finish in seventh. Blaine Perkins in the 78 for Mason Mitchell Motorsports this week in the eighth position. Eddie Fasher in that 55 for Venturini Motorsports this week. His third start of the season comes home in ninth, last car in the lead lap. Robert Bruce in that Hickson number two car comes home in tenth to round out the top ten. Now, as we look at the final page here, 11th through 18th, only an 18 car field this week. We see Zane Smith here in 12th. He was off all night, had issues just galore. Was not super fast at the beginning of the race to begin with, and then just problems continued to compound throughout the night. Seven laps down in 12th for Zane Smith. Chase Purdy, as we mentioned, probably one of the two fastest cars on the night between himself and Chandler Smith. Uh, 
had some problems late as uh, Gus Dean and Joe Graff Jr. were coming, barreling their way through the field with those fresh tires. Purdy and Graff got together, and that seemed to break something within the car. I'm not sure what, but Purdy was never quite the same after that contact with, with Graff, and then eventually he ends up breaking something. I'm not really sure what in the rear end of the car. Stops in turn three, and... Just goes up in a plume of flames, just completely engulfed in flames. He jumped out of the car. Chase was okay. Definitely not the finish to the night that he wanted, though, After, uh, especially after Chandler Smith more or less got eliminated. And with his spin, I think this was Purdy's race to lose, even with Gustine and Joe Graff on their differing strategy. Chase, I think, had the best car at the end of the race and unfortunately does not have the result to show for it. Sheldon Creed comes home in the 15th position. He had problems on the night as well. One of the few instances, I believe only the second time this season, uh, Sheldon has finished outside the top 10. He is in the 15th position. Uh, mechanical issues all night. Spun in turn number four. Just, just not a good night for Sheldon Creed. Not a good night for MDM Motorsports as a whole as we see all three of their entries here on this final page of the results in uh, 12th, 14th, and 15th. So that's your results from the Sioux Chief Power Pex 250. Now let's slide over and we will see what Gus Dean had to say after this one from our exclusive interview that we had with him just a little bit ago. And we're now joined by a winner of the Sioux Chief Power Pex 250 from Elko on Saturday night, Mr. Gus Dean. Gus, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, sir. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, no problem. It's great to have you on. Uh, great to have you back in Victory Lane Uh Tell us about your night on uh, Saturday night. It was a very up and down night for you. It really was. Um, real quick, before we get started, though, uh, if uh, if you have trouble hearing me, I'm, I'm out here at the summer shootout with the Legends car. And I uh, <laughs> I bet you anything they'll let me get my hands on. It's pretty loud, but uh, but yeah, uh, you know, Saturday went really well for us. Um, we uh, we had a really fast car at practice, and um, you know, we didn't really see the speed we wanted to in our mock run. Um, we knew that. You know, we weren't really going to see that speed in qualifying either, uh, qualifying in seven. But um, we knew we had something that, that could definitely contend for the win in the race. Um, when, when that first caution came out, uh, you know, we, we had originally said that if the leaders came, we were coming. But, uh, you know, our chief really didn't, really didn't want to at that time. Um, so uh, right at the very last second, he teed up on the radio, you know, stay out, stay out, stay out. Um, so I snatched it back up on the track, and, uh, and, and yeah, that, that was really the, the call that wanted the race. Um, however, until that happened, uh, you know, we uh, we ended up going until, I think, the lap 160 uh, before we had another caution, and the caution ended up being us when we spun out. Uh, so going 160 laps on one set of tires was really not what we had in mind when, when we made that pit call, but um, yeah, it put a two laps down. Uh, that was uh, definitely going to be a mountain for us to climb, but um, you know the famous saying goes: caution, free, caution is free caution, and uh, that were that that were very true on uh, uh, Saturday. And, and you know, as cautions came out, we were able to grab those lucky dogs, get our lap back, and uh, and ended up having two more fresh tires than everybody else did because of our pitch strategy. And that's uh, you know, in, in turn, what I feel like was the main component in winning us the race. So you mentioned you you were two laps down at one point, and you had that spin at one point as well. But then you got those lucky dogs to get back on the lead lap. At what point did did you in your mind go, okay, this might this night may not turn out as bad as it seemed like it was going to? Well, you know, uh, this team is really built on uh, on never giving up. You know, we've really shown that. I feel like uh, through through this year with with the incredibly bad luck that we've had uh, leading up to this race. Um, but, uh, you know, that, that holds true uh, when, when we're out there on the track. You know, me nor, nor my guys on pit road or, or anybody uh, behind the wall will ever give up until we, we kill that ignition switch from the final time after the checkered flag. And, and uh, that, that whole held true for us on Saturday and, and uh, really is what, what allowed us to grab that victory. Um, you know, it was definitely... Uh, Definitely nerve wracking there, you know. I'm not gonna lie. Um, you know, I feel like both of us, me and Mr. Jamie Jones, had had our doubts. So we were going two laps down, but um, 
you know, we knew that if anybody was capable of doing it, it, it was definitely going to be us. And, uh, you know, I, I've never, never questioned any call he makes on pit road, and he never questioned any call I make uh, from behind the wheel. So that really is, is what allows him to have that chemistry to, to make those risky calls and make them work. Um, and, uh, you know, it just happened to work out for us uh, very well. And, you know, once we grabbed those lucky dogs, and we had two more fresh tires, uh, while everybody else was, you know, tired and uh, you know, around 50 laps older, uh, I think we definitely had something that uh, that, that, that was going to be in contention for the win and going to be very hard to compete with. Now let's let's shift gears, looking toward this weekend. Now as we're rapidly approaching Berlin, give us a preview of Berlin. What are you expecting out of this weekend? You know, I've never been to Berlin. Um, but uh, I know it's a, a really short track, and uh, I'm expecting it to go a lot like Elko, which uh, you know, obviously went off in the same for Um But, uh, you know, this, uh, this green racing bigger distributing team is, uh, is just, you know, they're, they're trying, their movement is unbelievable, and they never give up on me. Um, they, they never give up on, on what we have going. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a family that really has and you know, while while their their try never faltered, uh, even through that bad loan, this victory I really think is the shot in the arm that we needed. Um, you know, I, I went to the shop this morning, and uh, everybody had definitely had a little bit more pep in their step. So you know, I think uh, I think that is is that extra extra little bit that uh, people say uh, give you that that momentum moving forward to to get more victories. And, and I really think that's going to hold true for us uh, moving forward to Berlin and future races. Definitely. Well, Gus, uh, congratulations on getting back into victory lane, and uh, good luck this weekend on uh, trying to make it two in a row. Yeah, sir. Thank you so much. Um, you know, I, I really think uh, I really think we have a shot at it. You know, this this three racing victory seven team is uh, is stronger than it ever has been, and uh, you know, I really think. We have a lot to look forward to moving forward. Um, bringing on that trophy, you know, just really, like I said, gave us, gave us some extra motivation. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, to Berlin and future races. And uh, hopefully I'll be on with you guys again soon for, for another victory lane interview. <laughs> Definitely. Well, that would be great. Uh, again, Gus, thanks for joining us tonight. And uh, have fun down there at, uh, where'd you say, Yard Summer Shootout? Yes, sir. Nothing wrong with that. All right, so let's take a look at your top 10 in points, leaving Elko and see what our changes are this week. Not a lot uh, really changed here this week. Uh, Zane Smith closing a little bit on Creed, but with only an 18-car field and Zane finishing in 12th, Sheldon in 15th, it doesn't make a huge point swing here. Um, Zane now 185 points behind Sheldon Creed. Uh, Riley Herbst still a good distance back. He's still 210 points now behind Zane Smith. And Chase Purdy still uh, another 185 points behind Riley Herbst. Still pretty close, though, to Travis Braden. Only 25 points up on him. Gus Dean, though, obviously with the win, the biggest uh, change this week is he has kind of drawn himself back into this mid-top 10 points battle as he is now only 70 points behind Travis Braden. Natalie Decker with her good finish as well. Right there also fell back a little bit from Gustine, but overall pulled herself back into that mid-pack battle. And Joe Graff Jr. actually pulling himself a little bit into this battle as well. He is now 185 points behind Natalie Decker. Uh, so still a little ways back, but not, uh, not completely out of this yet. I think he could still make some noise in this mid-top 10 points battle by the end of the season. Brett Holmes drops down to the ninth position this week after not being there again this week. I'm not sure what the story with that is because everything I kept seeing said that he would be back in Elko, and he wasn't. The 23 car wasn't there even to start in park as it had been for the last couple weeks. 
he wasn't there in the 52 for Ken Schrader Racing this week, so I'm not really sure what the what the story with Brett Holmes is. I'll try to figure it out for you, and if I find out anything, I will let you know. Um, but as of right now, I'm not really sure what the story with Brett Holmes is and exactly what he is doing or what that team is doing. Brad Smith now has moved into the top 10 as well above Con Nicolopoulos. Uh, in that 48 car has now moved into the top 10. All right, so that will do it for us tonight on the ARCA Racing Series Rewind Show. We want to thank Gus Dean one more time for coming on with us tonight and chatting. It's always a pleasure to get to talk to Gus. He's a great guy and a lot of fun to talk to. Um, if you haven't done it already, go down below and hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications so you don't miss a thing from racing news now going forward. And hit that big thumbs up button if you like the video. It is much appreciated when you do. We had a lot of content come out this weekend, as we usually do over the weekend with rewind shows and the such. Uh, we have a truck race uh, rewind from Kentucky that went up, uh, an Xfinity Kentucky rewind, a Cup Series Kentucky rewind, obviously this Arca Elko rewind. And then we have Pole Position that just came out a couple hours ago, recapping everything, all of that from the weekend, as well as IndyCar from Toronto on Sunday. So, if you haven't seen all that, you need to go see it uh, if you want some really good in-depth recaps of everything that happened over the weekend. So I think that'll do it for us tonight. This has been the ARCA Racing Series Rewind Show. I'm Garth Allen for Racing News Now.